<laughs> I'm joined in the studio now by the Solidarity TD for Dublin West, Ruth Carpenter, and John Hamill uh, from Atheist Ireland, because um, we have an EU ruling uh, that says religious clothing or art and or any other kind of uh, religious uh, artifacts may not be worn in the workplace if the employer uh, deems it to be so. Uh, Ruth, I think it best go to you first. Um, is, is this reasonable or not? No, I don't think it is. I'm. It, it's portrayed as being even-handed and aimed at all religions. But it's very likely that it will be directed more against Muslims because we have a climate of Islamophobia, we have a growth in right-wing parties who are demanding these kinds of things in Europe. Obviously, Jews and Sikhs, people who wear clothing that identifies them with a certain religion will also be targeted. Let, let's be honest, nobody's going to be sent home for wearing a crucifix piece of jewellery. It's very likely that it will be minority religions. And the problem with that is that a lot of people... Uh, as part of their identity, for example, Muslim women wearing headscarves. I was at a protest yesterday outside the EU office. It was young women and their slogans were, I cover my hair, not my brain. But the key one actually, which I thought was quite important is don't push us back to the home. Like Muslim women now work, they're highly skilled, highly educated. And actually the effect of this will be to make it more difficult for, th for them to get employment and to keep employment. And they see wearing the headscarf as being an integral part of their identity. And I think we have enough uh, laws telling women what they should and shouldn't wear. And the idea that you force somebody to take clothing off. I'm in favour of a separation of church and state. I'm, in fact, Solidarity and the Socialist Party and the left in general has pioneered that. I have a number of builds in the doll with regard yeah. to that. That's why I'm surprised. Yeah, but I'm not in favour of suppressing religion. And mm. we have to realise that this is very divisive. But I, 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 I thought you were going to use three words in your opening remarks. and you, you you got two of them. Like, you used the word Islamophobe and you used the word right wing. And you, the word you didn't use, which I expected, was racist. And, like, it, that's the argument always. I mean, this is not... I, I mean... This is aimed against religious artifacts. I mean, this will affect um, uh, um, Jews, for instance, um, who wear ringlets or wear the, the yarmulke. Um, this will affect, as you pointed out, Sikhs who wear turban, um, and it will affect uh, Christians who wear a crucifix. Uh, so why turn it into a Muslim event? Why isn't it, like, why isn't it, uh, why is there only a protest for Muslims? Why are we all, those of us who might be in favour of it, are, are Islamophobes? Well, you no, know, Jewish religions have spoken out against this as well. But the reality is, say, for example, in France, you've got six million Muslims. And these types of laws are felt by them to be directed against them. And let's face it, it's only Muslim women who are obviously identifiable as Muslim and I've spoken to a lot of Muslim women, I live in a very diverse constituency, who are regularly harassed by people, say on public transport or other places. And it will encourage, it has to be said, men in particular feel very, you know, liable to say to women on trains or buses, take that off, you shouldn't have that, why are you wearing that? We've seen this in Trump's America, you've seen it on social media, it, it happens in Ireland too. It happens after there's some terrorist attack. But why are men? Sorry, this is going where I didn't expect it. But like, why? Why are men the bad guys now? I mean, I couldn't imagine myself, and like, I'm no paragon of virtue, but I couldn't imagine myself saying to a woman, "Take anything off," whether whether it be crucifix or otherwise. I couldn't imagine myself haranguing somebody on a bus or in a restaurant or whatever. No, I just mentioned that it does. Those seem people, I think, would it, would harangue people anyway. Mm, well, it tends to be, for example, take take my own Facebook page. If you put up anything connected with Muslims you invariably get a trail of men who, who are saying okay. it, it just tends to be that way and probably but if I men. say I go to mass I get a trail of abuse 
I don't think you get a trail of abuse for saying you go to mass in I Ireland. Do. But, no, but I do. This will not be directed against Christians, okay. right? That's well, that's clear uh, because most Christians don't identify in that way. I get that, Pat. Yeah. I get that. John Hamill he represents Atheist Ireland. Obviously, because you represent Atheist Ireland, we see where you're coming from. But but let's talk about the argument because mm-hmm. you've heard what Ruth had to say. Uh, yes, well, I know Ruth's concerned about the judgment because she supports the freedom of religion and the freedom to express your religion in public. Uh, and I support the judgment because I'm in favour of those things as well. Um, so there are actually two separate judgments uh, by the European Court. Uh, one was in a case against uh, a company called Micropole in France uh, who asked one of their employees to remove a, a hijab and the court found that uh, that company was guilty of religious discrimination in that case. Um, and the second case was against a company called G4S in Belgium uh, who also uh, asked an employee to remove a hijab Um, And in that case, what the court did was they described some very limited circumstances in which that might be acceptable. Um, They found that the company was not guilty of direct discrimination, but may be still guilty of indirect discrimination. So what is, I mean, what what I get from Ruth, and I must say what I believe myself, is that essentially the EU ruling means that any kind of religious clothing will now be banned from the workplace if the employer if the employer decides to do it. Well, it's, it's actually a lot more tight than that. Uh, so the court defined the very limited circumstances in which you can impose neutral dress codes. So those circumstances include uh, the requirement that uh, the neutral dress code has to apply to all religions, to all uh, political opinions. It has to apply to all employees in the company. Uh, and it has to be directly related to the work that you're doing. It can't just be an arbitrary rule. So, as I say, I'm in favour of the freedom of religion. I'm in favour of the freedom to express your religion in public. Um, And that's why I support the ruling. That's not actually accurate, though. For example, one of the women who took the case is a receptionist. I mean, I don't see how wearing a headscarf has got any impact on safety. I I I will completely support the idea that uh, for safety or security or the well-being or whatever of somebody oh, else. Could I give you but an example? Uh, l- let's say, for example, you were arranging a conference uh, in support of the campaign to repeal the 8th uh, and you wanted to arrange some security personnel to check tickets at the door. Uh, and if you dealt with the security company and the people representing the security company were wearing emblems of a super conservative Catholic anti-abortion organisation I think it would be perfectly reasonable for that security company to say uh, we want a neutral environment for people coming into That's the office. That's completely different to the example I gave. But, uh, it's totally the, different yeah. to the example I gave. But, but uh, Deputy Coppinger what about the point a, 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 a number of listeners make though that the heat jab because it's only worn by women and because all Muslim dress is essentially aimed at women I mean to the point of where obviously uh, you can find Muslim women completely covered up except for their eyes that it it also represents and I suppose they're addressing you as a like as a feminist as such that it's actually an indicator of the position that Muslim women find themselves in, which is a put-upon place in, in Muslim society, an inferior place in no, Muslim well, society. Well, I, I don't agree with that, actually, okay. and I think it's a bit of an assumption on people's part. And you regularly hear people invoking women's rights, and they no more care about women's rights, you know, than the man in the moon. But a lot of young Muslim women wear a headscarf because they want to identify as Muslim or Arabic or whatever, because there has been a rise in the climate of racism and Islamophobia in those countries they're choosing to adapt. Others, it is for religious reasons. I have never found any evidence that a woman wearing a headscarf is any more conservative or any more likely to have uh, conservative views or re- religiously radical views or whatever than any other woman. In fact, I've worked with a lot of Muslim women in Dublin West, some of whom have been homeless, some of whom have been great 
homeless but, activists. But you are assuming that this, and I think it's a big <coughs> assumption, I, I think it's my biggest uh, point of difference, you are assuming that it's aimed at Muslims. Whereas, like Jews, as we've already said, Jews, Sikhs, Christians, all come under the same ruling. Okay, well, if you take Britain, where there would be a Sikh population who are out in the workforce, I'm sure it will be an issue there if employers decide to enforce it. But if you look at how this is being greeted, like, um, I've got a headline here, Europe's right held EU courts workplace headscarf ban ruling. Like, it's (laughs) seen by all of the really extreme right parties as being aimed at Muslims. Francois Fillon, who's a presidential candidate, has taken a hardline stance on Islam's place in France and he's welcomed it. Similarly with Holland, you know, all of these... But you weren't on the streets, and I want to say you, I mean, I use the word you in a general sense. You weren't on the streets when, like a British Airways hostess, a stewardess, is is told to remove her crucifix because you can't wear a crucifix overtly showing her religion on board an aeroplane. I didn't see any marches, you know... Down, uh, yeah. I don't uh, think the, the M4. I, think, I think the reason you didn't see any marches is that never happened. You know, the, <laughs> that's just simply the case. It's very unlikely. What do you mean somebody, didn't happen? It's very unlikely that somebody person will be. But sure, I spoke George. to the person. I spoke to the person. Uh, they won their case, yeah. so they're allowed to retain their crucifix. But they may not be able to now under an EU ruling, surely. Isn't that the point of it? No, the, the, the point is that the EU ruling is explicitly not a hijab ban and it's not a crucifix ban. What it does is it prescribes some very, very limited circumstances in which um, you can uh, uh, seek a neutral dress code in the workplace. Yeah. Um, and I think Ruth's right that my example was slightly different in that I provided um, a Catholic <laughs> example as as compared to a Muslim example, but the difficulty is once you make uh, an exception for one religion, you have to make exceptions yeah. for all religions. So we can all think of denominations like, um, for example, the Christian Identity Church, which is an explicitly racist uh, Christian church. I don't think any of us would be um, supportive of people wearing Christian Identity Church uh, clothing in the workplace but then the difficulty comes uh, if you allow for exemptions for one religion you have to allow them all. Finally Ruth the last word yeah the point is this ruling allows employers to make the decision it's not a blanket ruling that says no heat jobs in the workplace or no, crucifixes or anything else. Of, of course not, but it, 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 it's the fear is that employers will enforce this now. And can I just say, I'm completely opposed to any woman being made to wear a hijab, and there are, yes, exactly cases like that. Um, in fact, I'm, being, I'm in favour of women being able to wear what they like without people commenting. And, you know, we should remember that colonisers in the past went to some of these countries and the idea of declothing uh, Muslim women was a, a quite a, a thing as okay. well and it relates back to that too. All right, my thanks to both my guests who took time out to come to the studio representing Atheist Ireland, John Hamill and Solidarity TD for WMS, uh, Ruth Carpenter.